they say it's the final season, but I remember when I did Cagney and, <laughs> I did Cagney and Lacey for six years, and we were canceled twice. And, you know, when we finally were canceled, we ended up doing three movies of the week. So, you don't know. You don't really know. Well, several of the seasons, you really became the cliffhanger. Show up with a cigar, right? The end of season one. We're not expecting you there. You're there. We see you getting arrested. And then at the end of season five, you're breaking out of jail. You had the jello. They thought they killed you, right? Right. Now what? Is there anything that uh, we can look forward to as far as, um, without giving too much away with season six? I believe... I believe that you can count on an infinite amount of surprises. And the stories that I've gotten, I've only gotten a little bit before we had to stop shooting, before they had to stop writing. And um, John Kreese uh, does seek out uh, his history. And that's all I can really tell you. But it's brilliant. Seeking out the history. You know, of John Kreese. Of his own personal his history. His personal history. You've uh, obviously we know that you're black belt. It's Okinawan martial arts. Okinawan Tay, yeah. Okinawan Tay, and uh, we know you've always been associated with karate. Have you always have you always been a fan of other types of wrestling? Have you always? Well, I, I enjoy watching the wrestling. Yeah. I, yeah. I really, you know, I've been always a fan of kendo. I love watching sword fighting in tournaments of that style, and um, that to me is how I was introduced to karate because we were going to do a movie called The Lion of Ireland which is the story of Brian Baru, who first organized the tribes in Ireland to fight the Vikings. And it was a great story, and then unfortunately the tax laws changed in London, and um, a month later, you know, I auditioned for Karate Kid, which is 1983. Wow. But, but, you know, karate was never really a prerequisite for any of us. It was always John Evelson wanted the actors, you know, and... Uh, it's, it's been a wild ride, you know. Gift that keeps giving, and the people in Cobra Kai are such wonderful writers. Yes. You know, they, they write my character now with a lot of vulnerability, and I like it. I didn't want to play John Priest like I did in the first movie. I wanted to play him with layers, and they've done that. Which is, and my son was a guest star in, right. the, in the first flashback episode where you learn about what I did in Vietnam. You know, and uh, he bullies me as circa 1965. So it's, you know, it's all family, it's all great, and the guys are terrific. Any Westerns in particular that you'd like to bring back or that you're maybe in the process of bringing back or have thought, if I could do another Western like that, what would it be? Well, I really like Red River, you know, the old John Wayne movie. And The Searchers, honestly... I'm adapting my character this season, season six, to be like Ethan Edwards, to be that somewhat prejudiced, frustrated fellow who's come back from the war, who's glad to see his family, but he's not glad to see his family. And then his family is erased, in this case, by the Comanches, and you know he's seeking out Natalie Wood, who has been kidnapped, but he's gonna kill her for, just because she's lived too long with the Comanches, or he's going to kill her if she doesn't want to come home with him. Either way, he's resolved that she's got to die. And this is, you know, like a 12-year-old girl, you know. But he's that prejudiced. He's that conflicted. And I like that for John Kreese. You know, I really like... I like that the quality of, of Ethan Edwards in, you know, John Ford's searchers. You're going to work to bring that to the character. Bring that quality to... to because it's new, it's different, and... John Kreese escaped jail. He's a, he's a loose cannon. Right. And anything is possible, you know. What's well, it layers? Like you were mentioning, I mean, even with Cobra Kai, we talk to some of the fans, and we actually say, you know, hey, I'm a part, I'm, I want to support Eagle Fang, or I want to support Miyagi-Do, or Cobra Kai. And then it all changes. You think that the, uh, the, good, the, the good is this side, the evil is this side. Uh, the way that has played out differently than it did in the 80s, do you think that says anything about... Society, uh, how stories are being written. What do you think that says about these layers? Well, the, the, the fact that they approach the problems that kids can identify with with the teenagers in the show. Right. So there's, you know, like five, four or five teenagers there, 
And very talented young people. Oh, oh, oh terrific. And terrific writers, right. too. They really do very well. They're doing real fine, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're out yeah. there. And, and yet, you know, the reason why the show is so popular, whenever I do an autograph, an autograph convention, I always ask, why do you like the show? Right. And the adults tell me, they say, well, you know, we, we watched the movie and then the kids were watching Cobra Kai and then all of a sudden we suggested, would you like to watch the movies that we grew up on? And the parents, they get a yes from the kids. They then watch this, the movies, all three, and then the whole family goes back and watches Cobra Kai. So it becomes a family event. Brings it it's a total, same year. And, and it's like the Ed Sullivan show. Yes. You know, it literally is something for everyone. And I and that's why it's so popular. There aren't that many shows where there was something for everyone, and um, you know, there's just there's a character like me, and then jo Johnny Lawrence, Billy Zapka plays right. it brilliantly. The I call Billy the you know the king of irreverence, and uh, he's great. And Ralph is terrific. So I just think that um, that's why it's such a popular show, and it's endless what we can do. But you do have to keep it sophisticatedly written. It's got to be identifiable for the for the teenager, for the younger kids, and it is. It's just what they do. It's how well they write. You know. It's very well written. So well done. We're so happy to see you back in it. It just so happens that we have a few cigars, and we're going to take them. And uh, shall we light up a cigar before? Yes, we... I think so. Yeah. I think that's, that's what we need to do. I think that's what we need to do. A cigar always relaxes me. There's no question about it. And it's I have a, a script there that I've got script. to study. Well, cigar and script. Cigar I was thinking script. bourbon and a cigar are good pairing. A script and a cigar are good pairing, too. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Especially this is that kind of country. I find myself unable to study without having a cigar. It kind of makes the words come into my brain a little easier. You know. You've, you, have you always enjoyed that when you've worked on scripts? Yeah, because it creates a relaxation. You know, the cigar just really relaxes me. See, I even keep things. Oh, you have a few. Yeah, I yeah, like it. It just depends on how long the scene is. Yeah. <laughs>